Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So I'm going to start off with the Trina and Spencer set. Now, what's really, you know, there's a couple of things that's really interesting about this scene is that the way that Trina stood up for herself, you know, because let's be clear, she's been way more than understanding in a situation like this when any other woman would have just chose to leave, okay? Because that is one hell of a messy situation where your, your significant other to be living with their ex-girlfriend playing house with a child that's not his, okay? Now, she's had enough, right? And although, yeah, you know, Esme's a different person, not the same person or whatever, it doesn't matter, you know? It, it simply does not matter because she's like, I don't want to be around this person and I don't want to have to de and deal with that situation of, you know, every time you're here, I got to sit there and wonder about Esme and stuff like that. I just, I don't want to deal with that. And plus, she's already not happy with the fact that he has this unhealthy attachment to um, Ace that's not his child. And, you know, the thing is, in the, in the beginning, she was very on, you know, she was very defensive. You know, the dude slept outside or whatever, waiting for her. And right off the bat, she kind of came across as defensive and combative a little bit. Because in all reality, she already made up her mind about what she was going to sit there and do in this situation. So, you know, she pretty much gave him an ultimatum. She was like, yo, listen, if you're going to sit there, you're either going to sit there and pick me, or you're going to sit there and play house with your ex-girlfriend and her child. Which one is it going to be? And like usual, you know, like, 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 usually in these relationships, it takes nearly for you to hit rock bottom before you decide to do the right thing, before you realize that you just messed this whole thing up. And right then and there, Spencer was like, yeah, I can't do this. You know, um, that's not my child. I, I can't sit there and be controlling. He finally realized, you know, everything that he was doing wrong. The I guess, you know, at the end of the day, no one's perfect, right? And sometimes it takes a shakeup like that to make you realize what you're going to lose um, and how much it's worth before you wind up losing it. And so he was like, you know, listen, I'm wrong. I'm going to sit there and try to do better. You got to sit there and just kind of, you know, be patient with me or whatever. But I'm at that place. And she saw that. And, you know, they worked things out. They got back together. You know, Joss came in. She was like, well, I guess you two work things out. Now, Joss was at the hospital with Adam because he had a panic attack. And the thing about Joss is that she, Joss is, is a complex character. Because there's things that she's done that has clearly pissed me off. But for somebody who has a lot of money and everything like that, she never really looks down about other people. She has a very generous heart. And I feel like with Adam, it's kind of a detriment because, you know, she takes him to the hospital and everything like that and she's worried about him. But not that long ago, this dude was not there putting hands on her when she simply was like, yo, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing anything. I'm going to sleep. He grabs her arm. Now, I personally do think that Josh would have whooped his ass but that's beside the point, though. You know, she is worried about him. She does sit there and say that your parents is putting a lot of pressure on you. And even when she takes him back to the dorm and everything like that, and she has to sit there and, you know, um, make up the test or whatever, because she has to sit there and get into the hospital. She tells Trina that, yeah, he ain't okay. He is not okay. You know, Adam was like, you know, don't leave me or whatever when he when he went to the hospital and saw Liz. And I'm like, if we do not give this, I was like, if he does not get some help, 
he is going to become way too dependent on Jazz. And although she does have a big heart, and she probably would feel guilty if she just been like, you know what, listen, I'm not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not your parents, I'm not your girlfriend. You're going to have to sit there and, and, and take care of this. She would feel guilty. So she's kind of in a really effed up spot. Now, Carly, you know, she, she comes to Nina and she's like, you know, why are you sending this home back to all the town for? And I'm kind of just like, again, why does it matter? I mean, because ultimately she already made something mine that says I'm not going to do it. Um, I don't have the financial means to sit there and get it. And I'm not going to have my, I'm not going to ask my kids. I'll get it the right way right now. I'm just, you know, doing Kelly's. So I'm kind of just like, okay, so this could have been a simple text. I mean, I guess she was simply just assuming that, you know, she only did it to sit there and make peace for Willow and stuff like that. But she's like, you know, listen, it's cool. And even Nina was kind of worried. You know, Nina was like, oh, you sure you don't want back to the hotel? I'm just like, Nina, you're doing too much. Okay. She doesn't want it back. She doesn't want it back. You can sit there and tell Michael, I tried. I'm not whole thing is like, I just can't wait to a point where Nina's just like, you know what, screw it. I'll go and tell him myself. Just to get that, just to get that, that power away from him. You know, again, my only thing with her calling the SEC is that, you know, she would own it. She would sit there and be like, yeah, you know what, Willow, I did it. I was angry and I was upset, and I did it. I wanted her to pay. Oh, I would have been fine with it. But this whole being scared and running around and trying to make sure Sonny doesn't find out and Willow doesn't find out, it's like, what are you, what are you doing? You, you're doing too much. Now, you know, while Drew is in there trying to, you know, while Drew is talking to Michael about trying to take back ELQ, Dad comes in there, he's furious. He's like, you know, you're making deals. You know, you're not an officer. You're not in that position. Yada, yada, yada. Don't do that. And Drew's like, you know, the deal is only possible because Michael was there while you was indisposed. You know? So in reality, you should be sitting there saying thank you. Now, I did feel at one point that Michael knew that Ned knew about who talked to that, you know, who called that SEC. He came in there, he was, I don't actually remember the words that he was sitting there saying, he was like, no, listen, I got to sit there and talk about the SEC. And that's when Michael was looking at him like, I think he knows. But then he got a call about a business um, transaction that he made, and that's when that just kind of lost his edge. Which is like, bro, you, you're not in a position to sit there. <clears throat> you're not in a position to sit there and tell him that he's wrong. I mean, I get it wasn't his... You know, um, like he was just a shareholder or anything like that. But I'm like, he also made sure that he secured the deal while you was not there playing Rockstar or whatever. The scene with Blaze and Christina was a really pointless scene. The only thing that I actually got out of that is that she can actually sing, which is kind of funny. Because one of my subscribers, well, Nikisha, was like, you know, he hired an actress that couldn't sing. She's a great actress, but they could have got one that, that can actually sing. But they did wind up getting another actress that actually can sing, so I think that's pretty interesting. Talking to Christina and everything like that, while Alexis is talking to Finn and just giving him an overview, like, yo, listen, this is bad. This is, this is, this is really bad. And of course, you know, Ben tells a story, and it seems like it's a very simple case of, you know, you didn't come back for some time or whatever, and then it was a tapeworm, and, but it was something else. And by that time, it was already too late. But she's not there looking at it from how the jury would look at it, you know, especially the word cancer. Um, it's a very touchy subject. And she can clearly see how the jury can be biased. Because I have a whole issue with that. 
you know, because I do feel like juries, a lot of times they go off of their emotions. They don't go off of, you know, they're not lawyers, you know, they're just people. It can be very bad for somebody like him who actually did follow his job to the letter. Anyway, Alexa is able to sit there and get Diane, so I guess we'll be seeing more scenes of Diane. Alexis also did tell um, Christina about what happened to Molly. And I know, I know that Christina is going to sit there and try to help. She's going to be like, oh, I can sit there and still carry the baby for you. Molly's probably going to get defensive. I'm going to be sitting up there being like, no, you definitely should not be telling them that. I mean, yeah, they can make up and everything like that, but for, for forgiving and forgetting is two different things. You know? They pass things up. That's great. Let's not sit there and try to act like she wasn't treating you like garbage when you were sitting there trying to do something nice for her. I know this story is going to turn in, it's, it's going to go in the direction that I'm going to be unhappy about. So just know that that's coming and know what kind of smoke that I'm going to be sent to giving this particular story. Just a little fair warning now. Terry was in it. Um, didn't really do too much of anything like that. Liz was just asking a bunch of questions that Terry was like, I can't answer. So... You know, and, and the thing is, she kept pushing, and I'm like, you know, I get that Terry's your friend, but she's also your manager. I don't like since saying the word boss, because I feel like, I, I just don't like that. But it's like, you know, she's above you. If she says she can't answer it, she can't answer it. Stop asking. Anyway, I feel like that's pretty much about it. I can't think of anything else. Now, before I do go, just let people know. Because I said this in the members once, so I'll sit there and say this here. I'm not going to be doing a live stream tonight because I'm going, to, I'm going to be on Joshua Cook's channel. We're going to be talking about the Young and the Restless. Um, see, I'm not going to be on, I'm not going to be live streaming tonight on mine. I'm going to be on his channel. So if you are a fan of the Young and the Restless, definitely come through. As far as this week is concerned, see, yeah, tonight I'm not going to be live streaming. Tomorrow I will be live streaming. Wednesday, I won't be live streaming because I'm getting out of my day job a little bit later. And I'm not going to have a lot of time to sit there and even... I don't know if, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do a review on General Hospital. I'm going to try. But if I do, it's going to come out a little bit late if I'm if I'm able to do it. But I'll put something in the community tab. So just sit there and just look out for that. So yeah, um, Monday... Well, tonight I won't be live streaming. Wednesday I won't be live streaming. Thursday is Thanksgiving, so I'm not going to be live streaming. But Friday and Saturday, I will. Yeah, after that, it'll just go back to normal. Uh, I can't really think of anything else. So with that being said, I'm going to go. If I left anything else, just leave it in the comment section. And I will see you in the next video.